Welcome to the in-game content show. I am Chompin. With me here, our main and star. Introduce yourselves, kids. Kids. Yeah. I'm 20. Do it. <laughs> You're like a month older Damn than me. Damn youngins. <laughs> Whatever. Hi. What's up? And now we're going to be talking about Pokemon. This video has kind of been in the, like, we've been thinking about all the things to add in it for a while and here and there we've been talking about Pokemon a whole lot and we are Pokemon fans I guess if you couldn't tell by the title so we do have a ton to talk about these titles and about Pokemon in general. So of course they're going to be talking mainly here about Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire games coming out November 21st in the US like a, a week later in Europe because you guys broke the street date of X and Y and na 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 na. Um, so, <laughs> uh, we we're, basically talk, we're gonna be talking about um, some things that are confirmed, but we just don't know all the information of, and some things that are not confirmed, and, and just speculating on random crap like uh, megas we already know exist, megas that might exist, the map of Hoenn, because it has some weird things on it, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. So, let's just get into it. Um, so we're going to talk about now the confirmed Megas that we know about, Mega Skeptile, Mega Swampert, Mega Deancey, and Mega Sableye, and just kind of go in more depth what we think they're actually going to be like in terms of stats and stuff like that. So I guess we should just start with Mega Skeptile. So what we know about Mega Skeptile is it is Grass Dragon has the ability Lightning Rod, but that, and then I think we know like Heightened Weight or something, but who gives a shit. So, <laughs> um... This I in terms of stats, um, I think it's fairly obvious it's going to be fast. Personally, I'm thinking it's going to be you know even faster. Um, probably missing like 160 speed, maybe 150. Um, but then I'd I think say 160 just because I think it'll be faster in Alakazam personally. <laughs> what, um, what's Mega it, Gengar's base speed? Like 130 or something. 130, yeah. Um, so, I think personally, I think it's going to, it's going to have that increase in speed, and then it's also going to have an increase in both of its attacks quite a bit, so it'll be kind of more of a mixed sweeper instead of, because Skepal right now, it's mostly special, though you could kind of argue it's a little bit physical, but 85 is not exactly amazing. So, um, I don't know, it just, Skepal to me always looked physical based. Yeah. I even think, though it's like... So maybe they might actually do that. I don't know. It was really just screwed over by physical and special being split. Yeah, he was one of the few who definitely got worse, and also because you know he lost Leaf Blade, and that was his thing. Yeah. So it makes sense that now with Mega Skeptile, he could use it again. So it's possible, but I'm thinking with experience from Mega Hound Doom, they really could have given Mega Hound Doom a physical moveset and given him a physical buff, but instead they just gave him that special buff. They may do the same here. Mm -hmm. And I say that because of the ability Lightning Rod, which yeah, that is too. a special attack, so it would kind of make sense for it to be special attack or mixed, but mm -hmm. definitely not more physical. Well, then again, you could also argue that if, if um, it's mixed, but then leans a bit toward more toward physical, you could still get the boost of the special boost, so then it's completely viable for both. But then you are kind of relying on special boosts. Maybe, so. but I mean, I if you want to... perfectly honest, um, going pure special would probably be better. Get off probably. Stronger Giga Drain. Does it get Dragon Pulse? I believe Yes, it does. Oh, so, yeah. It does get Dragon Pulse. Give it Dark Pulse and got some work with. And Mega Launcher. <laughs> Except no. <laughs> Personally, I mean, you could also run a physical set. I guess if it got a little boosted stat, you could use Sword Stance or something. And that would be a viable set. Well, the main problem with Megas in general is that ones that are just like purely focused on increasing their attacking power is that oftentimes like even a, a band or a specs or even a life orb is stronger so on the regular is stronger so i think in that way like mix would probably be worse because if it was just like special oriented and they you know gave it like plus 40 special attack and speed for example then it would add then it would you know definitely have more to go on yeah it's made up for with the other stats, though. And with the ability, I mean, Septel being paralyzed is just shit for it. 
Yeah, no, but I know. Now it's... that it can absorb that and stuff and get a boost in special attack, that's a much better ability than whatever that get has now. Yeah, it escapes me. It's uh, I think it has unburn and is its hidden ability. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think it's pretty obvious that it's going to be fast as hell. So. Yeah. I mean, if it's fast as hell and it should have decent, you know, attacking. Um, besides like talon flame and mammoth swine, it should work all right. Considering so. how great Mega Blaziken is, I can't imagine that Mega Septile will fall to bind in terms of stats. Well, I mean, the main re reason Mega Blaziken is so good is because of speed boost. Yeah. That's true, but, I mean, it also gets a much higher attack stat. I think Sceptile will probably get around the same amount of stat treatment. So if we want to make a prediction for how much Mega Sceptile stats will go up, we can probably look at Mega Blaziken. I'll um, imagine it would be around that area. Yeah, me Bla from Mega Blaziken got 40 in its attack. Yeah, so maybe we'll get 40 in special attack with Sceptile, mm -hmm. or 20, 30 in both. Maybe. So, and then the next one is the other Hoenn starter being Mega Swamper. Uh, here, we know it's water ground and has the ability Swift Swim. Um, so, my thoughts for this is that it's going to be something like... Uh, well, it's I, stat-wise, I'm pretty sure it's going to be you know more of a tank than it already is. Uh, but... I'm guessing a speed that would probably be like 70 or something, so that... Yeah, something that's small but would get boosted by Swift Swim right, to be in a good speed tier. Yeah, so, because right now, it's actually, it's stats are pretty damn balanced, um, besides its speed, which is a bit low, uh, regular Swampert. So I can just see a buff to pretty much all of its other stats by, um, like, 20 or so. I mean, I, they'll probably... Um, if there were to be, like, one stat, which it gained more than the others, probably attack. Attack, yeah, but because, I mean, just look it at looks it. like he's hit the gym. <laughs> yeah. Hanging out with buff goals. <laughs> also skipped leg day. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why he's not so super fast. But, but then again, he's Except when he's in water, but that's, well, that's probably his massive arms. Yeah. Just going forward. I really want to imagine that now. Mega strokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's obviously using uh, the butterfly to swim or whatever. Uh, when I was thinking about Mega Swampert, my idea was Regenerator, but I mean, so Swift Swim is definitely different. But I mean, it's uh, not like inherently bad. So it's just it swim makes it viable in Ubers. Yeah, yeah. So. I was about to say that. But um, you think you think he'll be able to replace Quagsire and OU? <laughs> Quagsar isn't even OU, it's like UU. You, you. Yeah. Unaware is kind of a gimmick. I mean, it's it really messed up. Normal Swampert is better as it is just because as it starts out, it's a bit more rounded out. You really have to set up Quagsire for it to work. Yeah, I mean, it's a gimmick, but if given the right opportunity, it works pretty well. Uh, yeah, if they just I buff use it. its if they buff its defenses decently enough, uh, it should be pretty solid. The main problem with Swamper, and this is kind of the reason that I wanted uh, to give it a regenerator, is that it has no recovery. Right. So I don't know how that will handle out in this. Maybe the old changes move set. I don't know. In this new environment, we're seeing a lot of Mega Charizard Y. We're seeing a lot of Solar Beam. Oh yeah. I feel like we're seeing a lot more Sun. Just yeah. because of Charizard Y, and I guess Groudon's going to be making a return in Ubers, just for Primal Groudon or whatever, so I think Swampert there is going to have kind of a hard time. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same as Skeptile, where it's like against Talon Flame, he's absolutely screwed, so... Uh, um, but so I'm just thinking, there's probably, it seems like both of them have like one weakness, but it's a pretty terrible weakness, so... Yeah. It all depends. I mean, you know, Mega Kangaskhan had one weak weakness, and look what happened to that, so... <laughs> Who, we... I wouldn't say weakness. Mega Kangaskhan had one Hindrance. thing that could be a minor set mech. Had yeah. one kind of counter-ish. <laughs> he had a check. She had a check. Yeah. One so, check. Basically. And it's safe. One... By... Well, actually, no, no, I was going to say Copagrigus. Oh, and like rough skin rocky helmet garchomp kind of but even then i think it's to a kyoto like earthquake or something so um speaking but, of sableye yeah a counter to mega kangaskhan 
we also have a new Mega Sableye, who, if they replace Prankster, will be shit. But <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, okay, I was thinking about this, and um, because again, all we know here is that it's Dark Ghost, and that's it. We don't even know the ability. So, I was thinking, okay, so there's the idea that it's like a special version of Fur Coat, which is kind of interesting, but again, without Prankster, it's just support moveable, it's not gonna do anything. Right. But one thing that actually was really interesting that someone on GameFAQ brought up, I know a good idea on GameFAQ, what? Um, we was... don't mention that site here, we're <laughs> classier than that. Well, it was um, that it might have stance change. <laughs> That'd be... And if you actually, and, if you... and it gets King Shield or something? No, 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 no or like, or like Champ Shield. But if you think about it, because it's like, you know, holding, it's hiding behind the gem or whatever, and then it could have something else where it's like, I don't know, I can't think of an image in my head. The problem with that is how stance change works. It switches your base attack and defense and base special attack and special defense. But, like, it's connected to a move. It's connected to King Shield. I don't think using... I does can think see protect it having King with, Shield. I don't know. Does using protect with... with um, I, I don't think it's... Slash change it? I don't I, think so. If it got stance change, you would have to replace a move with something like gem shield or something, <laughs> whatever they'd call it. Yeah, I mean it's it's an interesting idea, but and also there's the fact that you're switching attack and defense, and it's like, well, neither of those are that good on Sableye, so. <laughs> well, apparently he has near like mega defenses, man at... according to the description. Yeah, so I'm I'm assuming they're definitely going to be buffing its defenses by far. So, do we really need a bulky Sableye to deal with? Well, I have a feeling we're going to get it no matter what, so... <laughs> <laughs> Did we really need Mega Garchomp? <laughs> yeah. Did we really well, need well, Mega Mewtwo? <laughs> well, the thing with Garchomp is that it still roughly does... Okay, well, That's the thing with Mega Garchomp is it's slower, so... Yeah, yeah it's, well, it's arguably worse. You could, It's better in certain situations, True. but Sableye is like... If you buff its defenses, it's better. Like, period. So... <laughs> as long as it has yeah. Well, yeah. The so. plot twist is it has 10 HP. <laughs> <laughs> well, they never increase or decrease HP, because that could lead to problems with coding. <laughs> um, yes, but, so. Yeah, so if it doesn't have Prankster... I Yeah, unless they... Unless they make it really bulky, because, I mean, then it's typing, and it's yeah. support moves that would make up for the fact that it's not Prankster, I guess. But even then, then they would, it would be weak to taunt. But yeah. considering Sableye's, like, base defenses are just so not good, like, defense is 75, special defense is 65. It's just yeah. like, ew. You know, even if you buff those both up 50, so 125 and 115, it's like, that's decent, but it still has that 50 HP, and, you know, you can cripple it with taunt and then other stuff, so it's like, yeah, it really needs Prankster regardless. Yeah, Sableye is one of my favorite Pokemon with Prankster, <laughs> but I really like the fact that they gave it a Mega. I wasn't expecting it to get a Mega. Right. It I, makes it kind of made sense just because Mawile is like the, the counterpart, and it got a Mega. Really? Yeah, they were version exclusive counterparts in a uh, Granite Cave. Oh, hmm. well, I guess that does make sense then. And um, yeah. It's a good Pokemon. We're looking forward. I'm looking forward to see how this Pokemon turns out. I hope it gets a really good ability because I use Sableye all the time. So um, yeah. On the flip side, we have a Pokemon that hasn't been used because it hasn't been released yet and gotten into Vega anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny because technically the actual release of this was just like. Oh, here's this Pokemon. Also, it has a Mega. <laughs> yeah, it's like, alright. This Pokemon is DNC, and we already kind of know it exists because of stuff that was revealed by hackers. DNC, Hoopa, and Volcanion have all been revealed. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it gets a Mega is kind of surprising. Nobody really expected that at all. Yeah, I mean, I want to say it's probably because, well... The thing is, you know, the reveal anyway kind of seems to be the fact that there's, you know, that movie that's coming out somewhat soon for it. Yeah. But it still seems weird because, you know, they've been working on this game, I'm sure, for a while. So they must have, like, planned this, you know, that they're, oh, we're going to make a Mega Dancy, like, a, a while ago. 
which seems super random because that I'm like I have a feeling they planned this to happen before like X and Y you know were released or at the very least before Diancie was revealed to be a real thing. So it's like why everything was planned. But it's yeah, but it's like why Diancie? You know, I mean. It's kind of like how um, in Smash Bros, like Sakurai said, he picked Greninja to be in Smash before like X and Y were even out. So it's like if you know if he picked some, some someone else and it turned out to be a Pokemon that everyone ended up hating, like that would be terrible. So it's like kind of the same situation almost in a way, and it's just kind of weird. Um, I'm not so much of a DNC hater or DNC. No, I'm not either. But it's just again, it's kind of a weird. Personally, I would have rather had Carbink get a Mega, which I mean, it might. Well, it does. But, it's the same as <laughs> <laughs> They're almost the same. It's kind of funny. It's like there's Carbink, and then there's slightly stronger version of Carbink. That's the NC, and now there's slightly stronger Mega version of Carbink, which is Mega DNC. Personally, I have a shiny Carbink, and I use it quite a bit because it's really good at doing a lot of things. Dual but here mostly. Well, it's also a good Trick Room user, because oh, yeah. it's the only Trick Room user to S30. Right. And you I mean, not that anything usually gets close to KOing it. <laughs> and you have them sneaky pebbles. Yep. Yeah, and... cause, yeah, because as I was saying with how DNC is basically a Mega Car Bank, it basically is. They just added 50 to attack and special attack, and that's the... that's. You know, that's what that a Mega said, does. There I'll you go. Kind of, that's it. I'll, I'll be kind of angry if all they do for Mega DNC is boost those defenses even further. I'm yeah. pretty sure, even though they didn't show it in that trailer, I think they showed Mega DNC using like Dazzling Gleam or something. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure she has a, a signature move, like Diamond something. Diamond What's her ability? Is it Diamond Storm? Yeah. The ability is Clear Body. Uh -oh. Yeah. Some people have hacked uh, DNC yet, or gotten it in some way. So I'm thinking, in terms of stats for Mega DNC, um, just to kind of guess, I would say plus twenty to attack and special attack, and plus thirty to its defenses. So that, that seems logical. So one twenty for both attacks and one eighty for both defenses. Or maybe uh, because all of its like blemishes have been polished off, maybe it gets like a super boost to speed. That would be cool. Just 100 more speed. So yeah. <laughs> it's a 150 Just make speed. her a speedy attacker now, which doesn't matter because on the Tardu Mega, you're stuck with your slow speed anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Does Nancy get rock polish? I would imagine it does. Do we know? Oh, it does not. Huh. Well... Oh, yes, it does. There oh, okay. <laughs> I mean... I thought it was a TM. But under that same principle, maybe Mega DNC will get much faster, which would be the neat way to go. I guess the expected way to go is what you say, just the boost, the attack, and the special attack, and the defenses. Yeah, I mean, the problem is that it just doesn't really have very good moves. Right. Like, for what it does, and it's, it's just okay. It's so, I don't... And if just boosting its speed, just kind of it just needs to do more damage, because I don't think it has recovery either. So... Well, I mean, I guess they boost the attacks, too, and it does have some stuff to work with. I guess it has Stone Edge or Diamond Storm, whatever it is. Some other stuff, but... Oh. If it got increased special attack, it would have, like... It would be a good Moon Blast user. Um, I'm just mad that they made Mega Diancy before making any Megas of any Gen 5 Pokémon. Because... <laughs> Gen 5 is best, Gen. Mega Vanillux. We need it. <laughs> Mega Garboder. We need it. <laughs> hey, I want my Mega Volcarona with Drought. Please. <laughs> that would be glorious. Eh, personally, because I use Bulky Volcarona, yeah. I, like, I like it having Flame Body. That's true. Because it just trolls the physical attackers. Yeah. In terms of... So those are the confirmed Megas that we know exist, but there's also oh, a wait. lot of... What? Should we talk about Latias and Latios? Okay. No. We already know everything about them. Well, I mean, we already know everything. Of what... Yeah, we know their uh... stats and ability and everything. Oh, we do? Yeah. Should... Hmm. Should we still talk about them? Well, okay, I'll, I'll mention it briefly or whatever. Um... 
of course, we also have Mega Latios and Latias, which haven't like officially been revealed and will probably be gotten in this game somehow, but we already know about them, so there's not really much to say besides Mega Latios kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the plot twist is they don't actually exist. Le gasp! That'd actually be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> they just never used, along with like Koopa. <laughs> I'm a, as long as Volcanian forgotten Pokemon. As long as Volcanian comes out, I'll be okay. Mega Latios and Latios are like the missing nose of this game. <laughs> Mega missing nose. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, that's confirmed. You heard it here first. <laughs> exactly. But um, besides the Megas that we already know about, um, of course, there's Megas that we think will be happening. Um, and, of course, there's no concrete evidence for this, but the two that do have the most concrete evidence are possible Mega Camera Up and Mega Sharpedo, yes. because, as I said in our other video, that you can see Mega Evolution symbols on Max and and Archie. So, that makes the most sense by far as um, Megas that they would have, because they almost certainly will have Megas. And uh, I guess let's start with Mega Camera Up. Um, Who cares about Camera Up? Well, okay, shut up. So, um, I about camera. it's, I'm assuming it's uh. still going to be, you know, fire ground. Um, I don't see camera for Sharpedo changing their type, but I basically think that if there were to be a mega camera, it would just like all of its stats except speed, which would be lo lowered, but everything else, attack, defense, special attack, special defense would all be risen quite a bit and be kind of a mixed tank. Yeah. Does it mean it already is up right now? It is already okay. a mixed tank, but it's just not that great at it. Cause just it's a bad one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's highest stat. Let me check. Uh -oh. It's a defense or HP? I would assume it's probably HP. Uh, no. Um, it it's, highest attack. its special attack is 105 and its attack is 100. Huh. And yeah. its defense is 70, and special defense is 75, and then HP is 70. So. Oh, so it really sucks. Like, like, absolutely. Yeah. I, was I could see them, like, honestly giving 30 to its attack, defense, special attack, and special defense, and then taking away 20, 20 for its speed. So it'd be super slow, but it would have, you know. It'd be a decent mixed tank. Or they could just go all special or something, because I think that would probably be better in terms of actually using it. Yeah. And some people have mentioned online that a possible ability for this, which is kind of weird, but it could be, would be, like, water absorb. It kind of makes sense because of the whole camel. Because it's a camel, and camels store water or whatever, so... Yeah, but it does kind of seem too convenient. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, it's I like... mean, it's already... The idea is that camera up stores lava or whatever instead of water so to yeah. just make it store water now would be kind of odd i could see maybe dry skin that was another yeah. thing that was odd one it would yeah it would be terrible in sun which would be like the best place for it to be at the yeah. same time so i don't know and it would be great in rain which is also where it would be worst as well yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's yeah, I don't think they'll do that. The problem with Camera is that, like, how it's set up, I don't really know what they could do without just making its Mega mediocre. Because, like, you, for one, you need to increase its defenses, or else that's the main problem with it. It's You just need its defenses to be higher. Because it's not going to be fast, like, that's for sure. But then you're kind of stuck with, um, you know, do you increase one ta attack, the other attack, both attacks, and by how much? Because, again, you're constricted by that 100 base stat increase. So, you would have to get an ability like Drought, which is already taken by Charizard Y. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna. Maybe huge power, pure power, would be pretty decent on this Pokemon. They need a special attack version of that. Yeah. For, just regardless, it just does pure power do that? I no, think they're just... both they're both physical. It's stupid. Hmm. Maybe sheer force. Maybe, I don't know. Air Force would make it a lot more. Uh, I just don't think anything's gonna. I'm fine with that. I don't think anything's gonna stop it. Can stop me. Yeah. Except huge boosts to its stats. It gets. But so it would be awesome if it does thing. get better. <laughs> yeah. Even then, like you know, the hundred base that increased total. It's like, what could they do? Because even if you put like all of that in a special attack, you know, it's well they made all, all, all good. So. 
they did make Mawile good, so... Yeah, well, that was True. only because of huge power, so... Oh, and fairy. Oh, yeah. They could just give this guy really hex ability. <laughs> I guess, but I don't... Camper up to Wonder Guard. Give it a ground version of PL Wings. <laughs> no. Ground... Wings? <laughs> <laughs> Someone had a list of like everything that was like something wings and it all rhymed with Gale for every single type, but I don't remember what it was. It was pretty funny. Uh, once it was like shale wings or something. <laughs> shale <laughs> wings. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so camera ups, again, we don't really know what they could do to make it really good. But Sharpedo could definitely be worked with to be quite dangerous. Unless they remove speed boost. Well, okay, so the one thing that, like, definitely people are saying speed boost for sure, but I w but then other people have brought up the fact that, well, you can just not Mega Evolve it at the start, have it get some speed boost, and then Mega Evolve it, and let's say it gets, like, Moxie or something. Oh, God. So then you have the speed boost already. But then, of course, the problem is that, well, if you switch out, you're screwed. So... Right. I mean, Mega Blaziken kept speed boost, so it's possible that I think this guy could also be its ability. Yeah. But... Otherwise, to some people, this feels a lot like a Mega Sableye situation. It already has a really great ability, and you don't really want to sacrifice it for the Mega. Yeah, and um, the thing about Sharpedo, is... though, is he's extremely underrated, as he is right well, now. Well, no, the main problem with Sharpedo is that it's frail as fuck. Oh, yeah, well, that's <laughs> why, yeah. It has 40 def in its defenses, which is garbage. Um... And if anything uses Mach Punch, if Smeargle uses Mach Punch, <laughs> yeah. Sharpedo dies. So, um, so the main problem with that is that even prior, it's that, you know, even if it's so fast, priority kind of kills it. Um, so I hope they maybe buff its defenses a little bit, though I'm, I mean, I'm sure they will, but I don't think, you know, probably like just 10 points or something, nothing significant, which Ooh. hopefully is enough so it survives a mock punch or something, but um, of course I'm expecting, you know, speed and attack, some special attack. Um, I'm kind of, if it if it keeps speed boost, then I would think maybe like 125 speed and then have like, you know, 160 attack or something. Um, I think they'd be okay ignoring special attack. For Sharpedo. Yeah, but I have a feeling they will increase it just because. Because <laughs> Game Freak. They get Gardevoir attack, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll just give Sharpedo a whole bunch of special attack and give it a new special moveset. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Well, its special moveset isn't, like, it's bad. It's decent. It's, yeah. It's, it's just its attack is so much better, so why bother? <laughs> well, the only difference between its attack and special attack is well, it has a stronger dark move with physical and it can use earthquake no it doesn't it they has dark pulse and crunch do the same uh have the same base power they do yeah They're well both. earthquake really is important in terms of the choice because earthquake is one of the best moves there is well yeah it needs it for coverage so um yeah i'm not sure exactly well okay put it this way i don't I don't see what they could do that would be different from what it already does, besides just making it better, that wouldn't just be a weird gimmick. So... Nah. <laughs> so, and then, of course, the other person, besides Maxine and Archie, um, that we kind of know about to deal with Megastones is Steven, who we know is, like, researching Megastones. So people have been saying, oh, you know, he just has Mega Aggron, but fuck that, he needs Mega Metagross, and it makes sense. So. No, he needs Mega Cradley. Shut up, it's Mega Metagross. So. <laughs> no! <laughs> um, Who needs Mega Metagross? It's just gonna be as weakened as the other one. Because... Hey! <laughs> Metagross needs a Mega. You're Although, gonna deal okay. with it. <laughs> I don't. The thing with Metagross, though. Um, really took a fall from fame. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely in singles, it's the worst pseudo legendary. So. Um, it but again, I don't think Metagross's fault. It's because they changed the resistance yeah. of steel. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, and then also the explosion nerf from. Oh yeah. Gen but, um, so it's not. It's not like terrible, but it's just it just has so many things working against it. But the thing is, just increasing its stats would be good, but it doesn't really like stop the problems. 
it's like a little bit less because they have like more defenses almost certainly but you still have you know the dark weakness the ghost weakness all this other stuff so unless they just like totally make it an insane tank with super defenses and like ridiculous attack and maybe cut the speed a little bit because you have bullet punch i don't know i mean the uh, the i guess the best choice would be drop the psychic typing but then it just seems like you're going in the same thing as mega agron so it seems too similar oh so. One thing I am thinking for this is they could... Does Metacross get either Levitate or Heatproof? Uh, no, it no. is clear box. If it could get one of those two abilities, it it would share that with Bronzong. That's one thing I really like about Bronze... Well, I mean, it wouldn't count here because... with Unless they made a Mega Metagross X and a Mega Metagross Y, and they gave one Heatproof and one Levitate... Which would be hilarious for that one turn of mind game, but <laughs> yeah, because all because the is... getting levitate would be pretty neat. Yeah, um, it would get rid of one of its common weaknesses. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. true. Earthquake really is terrible for it unless you use Magnet Rise, which is a shitty gimmick. Yeah, but and it kind of makes sense for levitating just because like you know both Beldum and Matang are floating in the air, so yeah, so maybe the Mega could just be like floating. Yeah. yeah. Look more threatening. I don't know. Another thing Main would probably mention is the move Shift Gear, just in general for this Pokemon. It's perfect for it! it solves all the problems. Not Except, really. like, Sucker Punch and all Shut that up. stuff. <laughs> it solves all the problems! <laughs> um. I can pretty much tell what its stats will be like increased defenses, increased attack. Maybe I a bit just slower. can't imagine its speed being changed or if not unchanged. I can't imagine it'll be faster. Mm -hmm. But that would be an interesting direction to take. Just make a really fast Mega Metagross. I guess. But it's I don't think so. That. Yeah. It's flat by priority. Yeah. That's the problem. I mean, it, none of its. I mean, its speed's 70. That's not terrible. But yeah, I think definitely yeah. it'll. Raise attack and defense, probably raise special defense, special attack a little bit. Maybe lower speed a little bit, depending on how much they want to raise everything. Alright, so say that instead of dropping the psychic type, the psychic type changes to a different type. I don't know what else it would change to. Really? Um, well, psychic type is because. Steel. Like, that's the whole reason it's psychic type, is because it's supposed to be, like, super smart, because it's, like, a supercomputer. That's true, but, I mean... I like guess Gyarados it's electric, hurt. but it's, like... Water dark. Why? <laughs> yeah, it's dumb. I mean, I guess Steel Electric kind of makes sense, but it learns, like, no electric moves, so that's kind of stupid. Steel Electric with Levitate make it almost as irritating as Magnezone. <laughs> well, he doesn't even have Levitate. Like he meant like give it levitate. Oh. oh yeah, yeah. Magnezone doesn't have levitate. Magnezone that's sturdy, so it was also annoying in its own way. Yeah, the only electric move he gets is freaking magnet rise. <laughs> so giving him electric typing would be kind of stupid. But... He doesn't get thunder punch. Nope. Well, huh. not leveling up in TMs anyway. Maybe, maybe. I think he gets it a move tutor. Yeah. But maybe they could change up his move set at the same time. <laughs> Give Mega Metagross Bolt Tackle. <laughs> yeah, he gets he gets Thunder Punch through Move Turner, but it I I just be weird unless they gave him like an electric pixelate or something that would be weird, but huh. I don't really know what they could do with that because the users for that are either all special or it's Pincer who uses you know Quick Attack. So I mean, what do they do? An electric like explosion i mean you know what can it do there's nothing else it can do it doesn't have any normal priority moves so yeah that's mega meta gross potentially and oh yeah <laughs> um that leak also or the leak there was a leak that showed a bunch of megas there was stuff like mega survivor mega zangoose i mm. believe Lunicol mega cradleian well, Mega Ludicolo. Yeah. And Shiftry and uh, Flygon. But I don't yeah. believe that. Honestly, I saw that image and the first thing that came to my mind was I could make this in Photoshop and it wouldn't even yeah. be that. So, Still be awesome. If there was Mega, Mega Ludicolo, Ludicolo there needs to be 
a Pokemon an game afro. on Wii U starring Mirror B. <laughs> Mega yeah. Ludicolo gets an afro. Or uh, something. Well, okay. One thing that I do want to bring up, though, besides those three, is that um, in the plot, of course, you have Wally. And in, you know, the original games, he had a Gardevoir. Oh. But it was a man. So do you think it will have a he will have a Galade, and do you think we could get a Mega Galade? It's It'd possible. Be fair. Galade kind of needs it. Kind of. I mean, the main the main reason I'm thinking of this is because you know Diantha is all you know big shot champion in X and Y, and she has the Mega Gardevoir. So it'd be kind of weird if Wally just had like a regular Gardevoir or a Mega Gardevoir. Either one of them is kind of weird. So. I think he will get a Gallade, and it's just kind of, you know, do they want to be fair and give him a Mega Gallade? I don't know. I would imagine a Mega Gallade exists, just because, I mean, just having one of the split ones have a Mega and the other one not is a bit lame. Yeah, I don't think it'd be they would have to, I would imagine necessarily that. as good as Mega Gardevoir, because it won't be fairy, and it won't be able to take yeah. advantage of Hyper Fairy voice. fighting. What if it's fairy fighting? It's not psychic. Well, I mean, that's not that maybe, maybe it doesn't have to be psychic. Well, then the problem is it doesn't really have any fairy moves. Right. So. Well, maybe. Yeah, it play rough. It. That's only. Or that the new only? fairy slashing move. I guess. Um, the only thing for me that I could really see if it uh, stands up to Mega Gardevoir is if it got like a fighting type pixelate. Um, but. You yeah. really need it, it gets, like, close combat. Yeah, I mean, uh... It would only make return be about the same amount of damage and no drawbacks, but... Right, because it doesn't have really priority to do with it, so... That's not really a thing. But... Honestly, with Mega Gardevoir, Pixelate is only used with Hyper Voice or Hyper Beam. Yeah, and that's... so... And honestly, you could opt to just use Moonblast, and it's almost as effective. Yeah, but you yeah. can get through subs. Oh yeah, that's true. Hyper Voice hits through substitute. But yeah. yeah, so it doesn't it wouldn't really help Gallade that much. But I mean the stat boost would be nice. I picture it being um a lot uh, of speed and physical attack. Really? I was thinking the opposite, I'm thinking making it more of a tank. Well, okay, the reason I was thinking that you might get a tank from Mega Gallade is just because Mega Gardevoir is kinda like that, and then I see it being like kind of embracing more of the knight aspect of it. And maybe um having kind of one of its arms form into kind of like a shield or something. I don't know. I mean, his special defense is already 115, so that's pretty good. So, just give it hey, a buff to defense. I don't know. It's to dark, ghost, fairy. Probably to dark. It's neutral to dark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Still, ghost, fairy, and flying, which means it's going to get still. raped by Brave Bird. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, that's why I say you give it, give it more defenses, and then it might be able to do something about it. I don't know. I just... It's one thing that I think could be possible. I mean, I don't know. I, I way to steal my idea too. Hey, I was thinking about it. <laughs> right. So, I don't know. I guess that's it for um, possible ideas besides just randomly throwing names out there, oh, which never released at all. What? Megal put in mine. What about them? <laughs> They'll have in kids' game for your case, everybody. Mega Plusle X and Y. Mega Mine and X and Y. Oh my god. Will we get... That's another thing we should probably talk about for a bit. Do you think we will see more X and Y Megas, despite this game not being X and Y? We're gonna I, get well, like, O and I R. Wait. O and A. Or no, it'd be Omega. O and A. <laughs> Omega and Alpha, yeah. Or maybe yeah. Omega Mega Evolutions and Alpha Mega Evolutions. And <laughs> Omega so Mega is, like, so dumb to say. Omega Mega! <laughs> um, maybe Alpha and Beta. They just forget about Omega. Oh, well, they wouldn't do that. Uh, I don't I think so. I don't think any of the... The only Pokemon I could see maybe doing that is, like, maybe Metagross, but... I see it on a starter. Maybe Mega Sceptile gets... <laughs> no, they'll just give... They'll just an X-Form that's physical. They'll just give Blaziken another one. <laughs> just give that would be one thing that solves our gripe about Sceptile. Instead of making it mix, just give it one form that's physical and one form that's special. I guess. They did reveal... X before they did Y, or Y before they did X. For Charizard, yeah. Yeah. And were two. Different times. So, maybe one of the Megas we see right now will actually have a different counterpart. 
maybe. I personally don't think so, but... We won't be discussing that now because that would require us to go over every single one again. Yeah. To describe how they could have a different Mega as well. Yeah. Uh, so let's just move on to the thing that's kind of like a Mega, but not really a Mega. Uh, Primeval Groudon and Primeval Kyogre. Is it Primeval or Primal? I don't know. I said Slash, so... I'm saying Primal. Screw you. Whatever. Okay. P Groudon and P Kyogre. Um, <laughs> I don't P Kyogre. Yes, you do. So, what we know about this is that we know um, Groudon is in its primal, primeval, whatever form is ground fire, while Kyogre keeps its type. And we know their uh, sizes and weights. Uh, which Yes, those have been ve- they are much bigger in their primal versions. Yeah, it apparently, is. apparently Kyogre is like over 30 feet, which is like fairly close to Waylord, considering nothing else is close to Waylord. So, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting. Not quite as big as Waylord, though. Yeah, Waylord's 47. Maybe Primal Kyogre is like the precursor to Waylord. <laughs> this is what happens with evolution, guys. Yeah. You become fatter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, what we know about these... Okay, we know they're going to have increased stats and, I think, new abilities. And then we, they also have a signature move, which was shown in the trailer. Groudon has this kind of fiery rock pillar thing. Yeah, so like... It, it could first, either be ground or fire. The first thing I thought was I like, oh, just... that's earth power, but it's not, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I would say, since it's ground fire, that it would probably become physical and that would be a new signature physical fire type move because outside of fire punch, fire punch it doesn't really have much except the rub yeah. if you want to go special for whatever reason well i was thinking but you don't just and by the look of the move i the first thing that came to my mind well besides earth power was that hey this could be like flying press dual ground and fire, fire. yeah so, so it's, it's a, like it's fire, a, but anything that's flying, it won't hit. <laughs> oh, that's true. It's, well, no, okay. What it could do it could do that because it could be um, it could be a fire move, but or also maybe feel- it would be like that move that's kind of there was a move that was leaked, or I mean, it's speculation that there's a ground move that hits flying types called like thousand arrows or whatever. Yeah, well, I was like that. Well, no, you could get around the that by having the move be a fire type move, but then also doing ground damage. So then the ground damage part of it would just like not happen on a flying type, but it would still do the fire move damage. So it would still hit. Flying Does type flying type. press still hit those types? Well, no, because it is a fighting type move. So huh. it's like it's like first type is fighting or whatever, which is why it doesn't hit ghosts. I, I mean, maybe the coding doesn't work like that, but I think that maybe that could work that way. I don't know course but that's just my thought i would kyogre's special move it just kind of looked like a better hydro pump or something so (laughs) more water (laughs) with glowy ring thing (laughs) yeah so it's more damage it's just a new form of water spout (laughs) well that's the thing i'm feeling for kyogre water spouts probably might just be better so kyogre doesn't really need to get better Oh yeah, I mean it's Kyogre is it has been arguably the best Pokemon in Uverse for a long time, I guess alongside Mewtwo. Consistently the best. And I guess yeah. now with Mewtwo's Megas, it's gotten a bit better. But now that Kyogre is gonna get this primal form, maybe it'll become better once again. Groudon has once again become even weaker to Kyogre <laughs> <laughs> with its typing. So yeah. Good um, luck. Well, the thing is also that we don't know their abilities. And so part of me then thinks when we grow on, it'll be like immune to water moves or something. But <laughs> I uh, highly doubt that. Yeah, it's too convenient. But what I do think will happen is that because, um, you know, in Gen 6, Drizzle and Drought were nerfed to not be infinite. So I'm thinking they'll get, actually get new abilities that are actually infinite rain and sun now. Uh, That'd be stupid shit. I mean, OK, that well, it's like. It makes sense because of what they are, you know. And well, I don't know. It just seemed like, especially in Gen Five, when it's like, oh yeah, this super amazing ability that Kyogre and Groudon have now, freaking Politoed gets it. It's like, oh, and I guess Rayquaza is gonna have an ability that makes permanent no ever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I come on. Super airlock. <laughs> I don't know. That's like my initial thought. Primal so. airlock. 
th who knows? Ozone that's, layer. Just, that's that's the thing that makes the most sense to me. But in terms of stats, they'll probably just be you know the same but better. So about primal Pokemon, I guess you expect to see primal Rayquaza just because. Of course, yeah. Kind of makes sense. But also, there is already a primal Dialga. Just in a spin-off, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time and Darkness had yeah. Primal Dialga as the main I'm villain. I'm confused about this, because are they just going to kind of ignore it because it is in another universe? I don't think so, because the way it looks, it looks like with a little bit of a visual makeover it could fit. So maybe we'll get Primal versions of Palkia and Dialga. Maybe. Well, actually, that kind of goes into uh, something I want to talk about in regards to the Hoenn map. So, we have the Hoenn map that was released. Uh, it's not in super detail, you can't like zoom that far in or else it's too pixelated. Um, but from what we can see, it mostly looks, you know, the same. I mean, there's a few very minor things like the, you know, the dock in Route 109 is there, because I don't think there was a dock before. But, in terms of things that are kind of completely new or out of the place, the biggest one is that weird Dark, dark mountain evil. cloud thing. Yeah. That dark blackness of evil in the north. And because it looks like there's some kind of structure in there. And I mean, I guess you could say, oh, it's like storm clouds and that's lightning. But it doesn't look like it. It's, you know, because that yellow stuff is like curving around. It doesn't, you know. Obviously, that's where we're all going to get Darkrai, who's going to be in this game. <laughs> well, because see, what I was thinking, though, is that actually that would kind of make sense as like a primal Dialga, primal Palkia kind of thing. Maybe, yeah, because but, where we saw it in, like, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, Primal Dialga lives in this crazy world where everything's dark, time has stopped. If that were actually a thing, maybe it would be connected to this darkish area. That looks strikingly similar to the area you go into in that game. It was kind of a rocky place, kind of dark in all these places, and it looks like it could fit. Yeah, I mean... Because if you think of, like, Pokemon in Hoenn, especially, like, the legendary Pokemon of Hoenn, none of them look like they would have anything to do with that at all. Right. The only thing that comes even anywhere close is Rayquaza, and even then it's not that close. So... Rayquaza has a spot anyway. Right. So, I think. Um, the first, the only thing that really stands out in my mind is, like, Primal Dialga or maybe Giratina, but that's it. And even then, it's like, well, okay, but why is freaking Giratina here? Like, he has nothing to do with, you know, Ruby and Sapphire. So... I don't know, that's just the biggest, like, what is this thing with this map? It's just the weirdest part of this. Another thing I will be bringing up the map here so everyone will see. You'll see that the map has been redesigned to look like two beasts fighting at it. I won't mention the one thing that I also think it looks like, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like they redesigned it to make it look like... Almost like a land beast and a water beast fighting it out, which would make sense in the context of this game's story, which is Groudon and Kyogre, mm -hmm. who are now bigger fighting it out. Yeah. Um, there's a few more smaller things I want to point out on the map. Um, well, first of all, of course, there's the, just kind of the regular clouds um, in the far northeast, and then, of course, down in the south part, which could be covering up something. Uh, we don't know, because we don't... That's it's, wishful thinking. Yeah. Like, the XY map. Yeah, but we don't really see, like, a Battle Frontier kind of place, and there's speculation that that will... Yeah, I was gonna ask if that so, was even on the map at all. It's not really. There are a couple of new areas that kind of stand out. Yeah, the two for me, um, are the kind of, like, mountains... They're mountains with water in them, like Zootopolis, but they're not Zootopolis. There's one right northwest of Zootopolis, and one kind of in, like, uh, Route 129. So... I'm wondering if that's just some little aesthetic thing they added or if that has any significance. Because you can see this sealed chamber or whatever, uh, where that would be, you know, in Route 128, just kind of looks like it'd be, still be there. So that's kind of a thing I'm a little bit curious about. Uh, what I'm seeing is there is a place right next to the uh, bicycle bridge, I believe it's called. And New Mawville is really, really small, so that area could possibly be a new thing. It's like this large landmass oh. that's on where the whale's chin would be. That's not Mount whatever it was called, because that mountain is up next to next to Four Tree in that area. So that new grassy area island, I don't know if that's been a thing in Owen, but 
If not, then that could be a place. Maybe that's where Battle Frontier is. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Um, but let's see. Some other things I did notice. Uh, Route 123. Because um, you can see, like, the berry house that's there. It's really small, but you can see there's that berry house still there. But then there's this yeah, other structure to the right of that that's, like, a lot bigger. Is it the one that's mm. kind of burnt brownish? Yeah, it's the one that's, like, south southwest of Mount Pyre. And it... Yeah, it's one next to that small water puddle lake. Yeah, and the right. I, it looks like a building, but I'm not totally sure, because, you know, it could just be, like, a rocky outcropping yeah, thing. But it just seems... It does seem kind of out of place for that. If they path. remove the safari zone, maybe that's the friend safari. Well, here's but... well, I was going to mention that because if you look at Route uh, 121, it kind of just looks like different. It looks, yeah, like it used to be more straight. It was a straight path to the right after you get down from that path next to the Reggie place. Yeah, because all the other... But now it looks kind of elevated in some parts and... Yeah, it does look if different. If you look at all the other routes, they look basically to have like the same layout, roughly. But Route 121 just looks a lot different. I don't really know why that much specifically, but also then like the Safari Zone itself, it could just be like in the trees or whatever that's covering it, but you don't see it like at all on the map. So I wonder if like the actual Safari will return or if it'll just be like the friend Safari that's there. I don't know. Um, and then one other really minor thing is that. If you look at Route 111, the one right north of Mobile City, above the Windstraight House area, there's like a cliff leading up to the second part of the route. Because before in Ruby and Sapphire, that part was blocked by Rock Smash rocks. But Rock Smash is not an HM anymore. So I'm wondering if then Rock Climb is going to return as an HM, or if there's just going to be some, like, you know, stairs or whatever going up that cliff, and it'll just be, you know, oh, you can't pass here until you beat Watson for whatever reason. But it's definitely, it's a little thing that also, it's a reminder that yes, Rock Smash is not really going to be used. Although that means they are going to have to change Rust Earth Tunnel a little bit. So let's see how that works. One thing I, it's a small thing I've noticed, but if you look below Pacific Log Town, that grassy area with the kind of ground area, I don't think you went there in Hoenn. Mm -hmm. But I I think I can make out a cave entrance. Yeah. If so, that could too. be a new cave. Maybe it would end up being a forced cave. Yeah. And at the end, you find, like, Volcanion or something. <laughs> It'd be funny. Well, there's a couple other stuff around there. I mean, there's that island that's kind of southwest of that. It's like a circle, and that could be something, or it could just be right Oh, yeah. I, that might be Mirage Island. Well, no, here's the weird thing, though. There's the cloudy part right next to Pacific Law. And there's also that white circular cloud too that could be where mirage island is well no mirage island was on route 130 in the or was it 131 in the game i think it was 130 um but it was yeah east of pacific log but like look east of pacific log like what is this thing here that has you know there's it looks like an uh you know a rocky island with a little bit of water in the middle and then like a beach and then kind of some like green stuff on the side like is that mirage island what is that because that was not there before unless you consider that as mirage island I was this... thinking that was possibly the new redesign for Ray Mazza's tower. Sky but... Pillar. But no, but if it's Sky Pillar, um, if how that showed up or whatever was the... If you look there, there's kind of that uh, in the rocks kind of lining the route. There's like a little path that kind of zigs up, zigzags up to the upper uh, left. The accident. Yeah, leading to those that cloud area. So that was how it was. That's kind of how you got to it in Ruby and Sapphire. So it's likely huh. that the clouds are hiding that. Maybe. I don't know. It's just kind of if a weird not, thing. then they replaced Sky Pillow with this new area, or maybe that is an island you go to. Mm -hmm. Who knows? It is yeah. something new, so keep a lookout for it. Let's see. I'm seeing a lot of those possible dive areas. Yeah. You see so that thing that looks kind of like an unknown, but I'm not going to say anything about that. Yeah, well, that's looks kind of Omega-y to me. Yeah, that too, so, you, I well, mean... I mean, Alpha, Omega's Dive is probably going to return and in full form this time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just see, I mean, well, Dive is kind of necessary unless they completely change some things. So, like, you know, how do you get into yeah. shoot office? So, um... Rock climb. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, it's pretty obvious there's a lot of dive spots around, so that's good. I there like might that. be some new ones as well. I'm not sure. Because the whole map just looks big. 
for some reason me. And I, I don't remember it looking like this before. There's definitely a lot of picking away that can be done on this map. Yeah. Which, it's a bit surprising that Game Freak released this much information. It could just be that you know, some of the stuff on this map is inaccurate, but it looks really detailed, so mm -hmm. I highly doubt it. And, and That's why I'm mapping this entire resolution of this, because I want to zoom in. <laughs> but I can't. Uh, and, well, it's a really awesome looking map. That's why we have it blown up. Yep. This is why, although I do hope, because it doesn't look obvious uh, if there's any post-game areas uh, that are any, sig any significant at all, really. Um, again, maybe that island with the cave on it south of Pacific Log is something, or, you know. But who knows? We'll just have to wait and see, because, you know, we really can't tell at this point. Obviously, Sinnoh is confirmed, and you get there by going to the dark, spooky <laughs> island. Yeah, that's the that's post -game the best. Is, the post game is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole game. But you use your Pokemon. <laughs> That'd be pretty intense. Yeah. As much as the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon crossover would be amazing, I don't see that. No. But Anyways. <laughs> anyway, to kind of go off the map, um, well, I talked about Rock Smash a bit, so they would have to... Do pretty. I'm pretty sure they're basically going to get rid of almost all the Rock Smash stuff. They're definitely the ones that you need, you need to pass by, so Route 111, Ruster Tunnel. I don't really know how they're going to change Ruster Tunnel for that, because I believe the guy gave you strength there, so you can't really use strength unless... The thing it's I'm really seeing is, in X and Y, HMs were kind of an afterthought, because they kind of realized that people don't like having to have Surf or Rock Smash on their Pokemon, even though Surf is a good move. Yeah, There's stuff yeah. like Strength and other stuff that people just don't like using. Well, the problem here with Hoenn is that... You know, it's designed to be kind of... Yeah, it's designed and, uh, where you yeah. need Surf. Unless you've got, like, a boat or something, which would be really weird. Yeah, I don't think they would do that, just considering they've had Surf for so long. At but... least Surf is a good move. <laughs> yeah, so, but then again, they still do have a fair amount of stuff with, like, Strength. Because there's a couple of Strength puzzles, like, in the uh, Sealed Chamber. Or not Sealed Chamber, the Seafloor Cavern. There were all the Strength puzzles in there, yeah. so... I mean, Strength will probably come back. Well, Strength is coming back, and it'll probably be used just about as much. But Rock Smash, I'm certain, is going to be going away. Um, I'm kind of curious about that cliff on Route 111, if that has to do with anything. But it'd be weird if you got Rock Climb really early, considering you got it late in other games that appeared in, so... Well, other than... It's not really a too notable move, so... Yeah. Eh. I wouldn't mind getting it earlier. They're probably going to shoehorn Rock Climb in a lot of places. Yeah, I mean, well, they could they could use it in places. I mean, there they like could in use that bike area, jagged pass. They could use it. Uh, yeah. Maybe like Meteor Falls or some other cave they could use it. So it wouldn't be totally out of place, but it would seem kind of weird that they would give us another HM. So, meh. Yeah, meh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked a little bit about the Safari Zone, how it just looks kind of weird on the map, but um... more importantly, <laughs> secret bases. Of yeah, so we need them. We, well, we, we know they're they're actually pretty much confirmed at this point because there really? was, there was a screenshot um, that showed it's the scene at, in Route 120 where Steven you know gives you this the scope after you find the Kecleon or whatever, right. and it's a screenshot from there and you can see like a rock indentation. So, oh. um, we it's basically confirmed that they're they're back but it's it's the whole thing is of course well how are they going to function is it exactly the same as ruby and sapphire then expand it to be street pass enabled yeah. are they going to do hey. my idea where it's kind of fused with the friend safari and there'll be like three wild pokemon in there uh, hey 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 it's yeah. okay because you can sit in chairs now shut up <laughs> But I'm just wondering if they're going to, like, have the Friend Safari, you know, be in the secret bases. Are they going to have it replace the actual Safari? Or is, you know, they're going to have some other building somewhere else with the Friend Safari and have the Great Safari? I don't know. Person to me, yeah. that sounds kind of odd. But one thing I do see they could do is some kind of street pass or spot pass function. Where you can receive other people's secret bases and they'll be wherever they are in the game. The only problem with that would be, like, if they're in the same place that yours is. Yeah. That would cause some conflict unless they made it so that, like at like two doors or maybe you could choose which one to go into when you enter. Or but they just that would be an interesting take on it. 
I don't think about street pass pass people is, and yeah. see their secret bases, and in the secret bases you can battle them or something. Mm -hmm. A pre-made team. There's nobody here for me to street pass, so... You're going to Maybe call Maybe spot pass too, oh, yeah. or some kind of oh, yeah, internet pass thing. Trust if you're me. really lonely, you can make a street pass relay and street pass yourself. <laughs> No, well, trust me, uh, going to college, I get ten passes easily just walking to one class, so yeah. <laughs> it's not I a get a couple in college, so you'll probably see some. Well, in terms of other stuff that you guys could be doing in Hoenn, of course, we have the Battle Frontier, which I imagine they'd bring it back, but... It's I'm kind of obvious because it's been in every main Pokemon game now in some form. I mean, we have the Battle Tower or whatever, the Battle Train... But always that kind of battle facility that has yeah. existed. I would like for them to do it the way Emerald did, because they kind of did it best of all the different events you could do. Maybe refine it like the way they did with the uh, Diamond, the Gen 4 Battle Frontier, but still have those interesting battle choices. Like, I like to rent battles. I like battles that are in mazes. They're just interesting. They shake it up, even though it keeps the core of battling with strong Pokemon. Well, the thing with uh, this game is that, like, Harkle and Soul Silver, they had uh, the Battle Frontier, but it was exactly the same as the one in Platinum. Yeah. Yeah. And this game, it was, if you were to do that, well, then you're just saying that this game would have the Battle Maids on, which would be okay, but Battle Frontier is more interesting. So. But yeah, it would you think, kind of um, suck. Inverse battles and sky battles would get their own facility, or they would just make them options. Maybe in inverse facilities. battles. I personally don't give a shit about sky battles. But yeah, there's been inverse battle tournaments. Yeah, inverse just... battle like they they really should have focused on that more in X and Y. If there's just that one trainer who does it, and it's kind of sad. I mean, sky of... trainer, sky battles. Who cares about that shit? <laughs> yeah, inverse is just like super cool. So I hope they have something more to do with that here, maybe. Maybe uh -huh. an entire, just an entire building. It's like the battle inverser. <laughs> I don't <laughs> or know. Whatever. Um, but then, of course, there's the other aspect to battle. Well, there's battling, and then there's the other thing that was in Hoenn all over the place, which were the contests. So, oh, I really would like for these to return. Um, I got a bit of a nostalgic asm for them because a channel did like a remix of the. Ruby and Sapphire contest theme, but with X and Y's music. It, and I really like the concept of contests. I feel like they could do a lot more of it as well, but if they do return, then I really would like to see what they do. The only thing that, uh, is it goes against it, is that they completely removed, like, those stats and stuff from the coding. Oh, true. So they're they like they're not an X and Y at all, and I don't even think they were in Gen Five. So, I mean, you know, you could put them back in, but and you still so, have those ribbons, I guess. I guess, but again, and then you'd have to think about. Well, we know we know berries are returning in the exact same fashion as they were in the original games. There was a screenshot which showed the berry trees. So Poffin or whatever, not Poke Poffin, blocks. Poke blocks. Um, those will probably. If contests are back, those should be able to come back fairly easily. The one thing I'm noticing, I'm looking back at the map, and going back to the layouts of the towns, I'm looking at the towns, and they definitely have, you know, Slateport, Bird and Turf, and Lily Cove that had the contest halls. I'm yeah, looking at those spot, buildings. And they definitely, they all have buildings that look similar in those spots. They kind of have like, a, kind of like a pink roof. Yeah. Like a pink roof. Yeah, and they're all there. So, so if you want evidence of contests being in here, then you can refer to the map. I yeah, I mean, you, you can't really see Fall Arbor Town because it's not chimney smoke, but it's something, and I mean, it makes sense, but again, they would have to program all that back in, so who knows? Maybe they'll just be, like, clothing shops. Well, they did have, know. like, Megas that like it weren't was... in X and Y in these, so I guess they're able to leave stuff out of the building. Yeah. It's not like it's that hard to actually raise the stats anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So it wouldn't be too much of a hassle even if they had to just reintroduce it. Or maybe it actually is in the coding and we it's just invisible at this point. I guess. Um, one thing I do want to mention though is that, because one thing that people have been asking about a lot are uh, character customization. And you'd think, oh, okay, well yeah, sure, it was really like the next and Y, you know, why would they not bring it back? But the only problem is where would they put it? 
because my thought initially was that they would, you know, because in Hoenn, that was back when the center and the Mart were separate. So here they would just have, you know, the center be both, again, like how it is in X and Y and 5th Gen, with the Mart and the Pokemon Center in the same building, and then where the Mart was, they'd have a clothing shop. But it's it, from screenshots, we know that the Mart and the center are separate again. So I don't really know what they would do besides like adding a completely new building, which if you look at a lot of these maps, I don't see any added buildings, really. Did we see the insides of both the Mart and the Pokemon Center? No, so that was my other thought was that... Maybe the Marts are actually the clothes shops now and the Pokemon Center still retain their function of... Well, no, 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 it's... Both- it's- like, I'm pretty sure the Mart, it's like the blue, uh, you know, roof, and I think we saw a thing where it said Mart on the side of it or whatever. So, maybe you could have, like, you know... A maybe the center. Mart also has, like, a closed place. Yeah, so there's, like, the main counter with potions, and then there's a side counter in some of the towns that has clothing or whatever. So, I mean, we haven't seen any character customization at all, but we didn't see it in X and Y in the pre-release stuff for a while, so... And the way that the models look right now... Personally, I think because the models are that similar, that's the direction they'll go. Yeah. Uh, the only thing for me that is kind of... It's, it's a something that I want for customization, and this kind of points to it if it's in the game, is that, um, especially in terms of hair, there was just not enough options. And... Um, but it definitely, in here, if there was character customization, I mean, May's hair is yeah, like... Yeah, they would have to have her hair style. Hair. So, like, automatically, you're going to have different hairstyles in terms of that. So, that would be nice for me personally. Um, if I were to, like, put clothing stores kind of in this in Hoenn the same way that, like, they were spreading Kalos, uh, probably, like, let me think. Yeah, maybe the contests are actually the clothing stores. <laughs> maybe. I could just put in <laughs> Lily Glow with the mall. Just put it in the mall. Just one store with well, okay. clothes, and like you don't get to customize your character until then. Well, here's what I was thinking: um, you could have clothing in, let's say, Heidelberg, Slateport, Lava Ridge, Fortree, Lily Cove, and Sutopolis. But Lily Cove would have like you know, Lumios had the uh, super fancy clothing place. So maybe like Lily Cove will have that in like the department store or something. Yeah. The, well, the only thing problem with that is there isn't. There isn't a Lumio City, basically, like, in Cohen, you know, like how Castilia and Lumio City just kind of dominate. There isn't really one of those in Hoenn. The only one, the closest one, I guess you could say, the Lily Cove, but even then it's really not that big, so, I don't know. Wish they would redesign some of these cities to be bigger, too, and have, like, that Lumio City feel, even though I wouldn't like them to bring back the confusing pathways. Yeah, I mean... Maybe it's... make Slateport City a bit larger in scale. Maybe, and kind of expand, like, the market part of it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. It really could be expanded on, in my mm-hmm. opinion. I I don't think they will, just from the screenshots we've seen of the game. Almost all of the areas are designed very similarly, similarly in terms of layout to how they were originally. Whatever, so. I only care about the music. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason I'm buying this game. <laughs> uh, but, I don't know, we'll have to see. But and Primal Kyogre, of course. Um, but one more thing, of course, well, we know that, uh, gym leaders and also, of course, the evil team people, they got redesigns, uh, so I'm expecting, well, okay, the evil team leader and all those guys, they changed quite a bit, but... The gym leaders didn't change too much from what we seen saw, from Roxanne. Yeah, Roxanne looks basically the same. She just so, looks a little younger. That's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, and, like, the clothing is a little bit different, but it's the same style or whatever, so... Yeah. I don't think anyone's going to get, like, an extreme makeover uh, in terms of that, but it will be kind of interesting just to see what the other ones look like. Um, But one thing I kind of do want to bring up is that these gym leaders and stuff, well, they're using mostly Hoenn Pokemon, but some of these Hoenn Pokemon have gotten, like, evolutions or split evolutions since then, namely, like, Gallade we were talking about, uh, Dusk Noir also, um, Frostlass. So I'd imagine those would be in the game and available for you to use, but I'm also, so, like, for example, Phoebe in the Elite Four, you know, her... She uses Dusclops a lot. Instead. She has two Dusclops and two Binette and a Sableye. So they could just, like, have one of those Dusclops be a Dusk Noir and then maybe give her a Frostlass instead of a Binette, you know, so it's Dusclops, and Binette. Mega Sableye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's Dusclops, Binette, Sableye, Frostlass, Dusk Noir, and it's a much more varied team than what she has right now. Yeah. So... 
I don't think we'll see Megas for Elite Four members or Megas for Gym Leaders, but it would be cool. Yeah. One thing I do want to mention, if you'll let me have this moment. Um, I have heard that one of the trainers that we've seen in, was in Owen. I'm not sure what her name was, but where she used to have two Pokemon, she now has one. Some people are saying that's evidence that the game will either be overall easier or the return of easy and hard modes from Black and White 2, but implemented differently. I hope so, because the thing that irritated me about challenge mode was that you needed somebody else to activate it. If and why the heck do you need someone else to beat... Why the heck do you need to unlock easy mode at all? Right. It yeah. It makes no goddamn sense. It, it doesn't make much sense. And, okay, the thing for me is that... X and Y were really easy, and while I liked the EXP share because grinding was, like, not a thing, um, it did... So, it, I, I don't want them to revert the EXP share to how it was before, but I just want them to, like, scale the levels up higher of the trainers. Um, and I think they could do that here for Hoenn, because even then, like, remembering Ruby and Sapphire, the levels were actually fairly high, especially when you got to, like, the Elite Four and stuff. Like, they were decently high, higher than you. Yeah, so. the Elite Four is punishingly hard, as well as the Victory Road. I hope they keep that. Yeah, so I hope they kind of expand on that a bit. Again, like you were saying with the Megas, I don't. I think they're probably going to follow with X and Y and just have like you know, Archie, Maxi, your rival, maybe Wally, and uh, uh, he knows means Steven. If they follow and Steven. X and Y, they're going to have less Pokemon on each team. That would stink. Yeah, I, that's the one thing that I think is really dumb, is that, you know, the final gym leader only has three Pokemon and Elite only has four. That's really stupid. They shouldn't have five. At the, the Elite Four only have, like, four Pokemon each. <laughs> four Elite Four. Yeah, I know, Get but it's, it. it's dumb. They shouldn't... That shouldn't yeah. happen. You know, Wallace should not have three Pokemon. Well, so. personally, I don't care much about the story too much because I'm more of a competitive player myself. Yeah. This could be a concern for others if they made the game overall easier. Yeah. But hopefully it's just an implementation of an easy and hard mode, which would be great because some of us really like challenge mode when we could get it. Well, it's not like Heart Gold and Soul Silver were like way easier than Gold and Silver. But Gold and Silver a... were easy as heck, so that doesn't count. Yeah. The, and they uh to you in, in that game because the wild Pokemon were extremely under level compared to where you were in the game. After that's that's definitely true. That's definitely true. The game uh, was just overall quite easy. It, so Yeah. I mean and also the fact that, that three gym the three Pokemon at the final gym leader thing didn't start until Gen five anyway, so uh I don't know. I just hope they don't <laughs> I hope they. I think the rosters of the gym leaders they'll keep about the same. I don't really see any problems with it. But the elite four, like they definitely need some new members. Like Phoebe and Glacia just have like no variety. Freaking Glacia has three, has two lines in her entire team and uses them several times. So it's kind of stupid. <laughs> well, they probably won't first, so change the teams the first time around, though. I don't know. I think they should. It just for that, it's just kind of like you know. Add in, because I mean, like how Platinum added some fire types so Flint wasn't stupid. You know, they could do the same thing where they add like a few more ice types in Shoal Cave, for example, and then you can actually have you know Glacier with the dis with a decent team. Well, Hoenn's regional decks did have like a lot of variety, so maybe they can implement some newer things in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The main problem with Owen was just that it, well, it, in terms of that, is it had no ice types. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense as a tropical region, but still. Pokemon has always been an easy series, so I guess if it got easier, that wouldn't exactly be out of the norm, but eh. Please no. <laughs> <laughs> have it be something. Uh, oh, okay, so then the last thing we really talk about is the story of these games, and... Um, the biggest question, I guess, is, like, are they going to take elements mostly from Ruby and Sapphire or mostly from Emerald? Because, you know, Emerald has the whole two evil teams, and they both unleash their legendaries, then they fight, and Rayquaza does whatever. I personally don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be more Ruby and Sapphire-based, where one team is evil and one team is not. However, I don't think it's going to be, like, the other team is good. Because in Ruby and Sapphire, like, that was kind of weird. I was like, Team Magma, we're evil. Team Aqua, we're so good. It's like, what? So, 
I have a feeling that maybe like one, they'll both be kind of evil, but then one of them will like overstep their bounds and then like the other team will help you even though they don't really like you, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. The, I think my enemy is my friend kind of thing. I think that the story, it won't change much, but it'll change under the pretext that we're just going to get Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. They did trademark Delta Emerald, but I they trademarked highly, a lot of blue. yeah, <laughs> they, I doubt we're gonna get that because we never saw Lightning Yellow. We never saw. Well, no, I don't know Heart. Silver Soul Crystal, whatever. <laughs> well, no, they actually trademarked Water Blue. We never got it. So well, yeah, we never got Water Blue. We never got a third version of those remakes. We never got a third version of the Johto remakes. I don't think we're getting a third version of the Hoenn remakes. Yeah, so that kind of makes the Emerald plot kind of weird to work with this, just because of the two, you know, how the games are structured. I think that... They probably will have the two fighting, but Rayquaza won't be a big part of it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe have, you know... Yeah. Rayquaza from... will have his own bigger storyline just from when you go to that secret area. Yeah, the... And you get him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe like, as I was saying, how that whole enemy on enemy thing, maybe have in Omega Ruby, um, Team Magma unleashes Groudon, and then to stop Groudon you have to kind of help Team Aqua to, like, get Kyogre up, and then Kyogre maybe weakens Groudon enough so that you can then capture it or something. If yeah. there's any one thing that kind of shifts the table in favor of a third game remake, it's that Rayquaza kind of had more of an impact on that game's story than Suicune did, and then, I guess, Pikachu did. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> you know? Hoenn is the first, well, third gen is the first gen where there really was a legendary trio as the main legendaries. Yeah. yeah. So, so if, yeah. Th if there was any credibility to that claim, then that would be why. I still don't think it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as other things, one, something I do think they'll keep from Emerald is, uh, the Magma hideout in Jagged Pass. Because mm. it just made no sense that Team Magma was, you know, in the Lily Cove Harbor. <laughs> Random and weird. So they'll probably have that remain. Um, besides that, though, they, I don't... They'll probably don't, implement Reggie Giga somehow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. De probably, he'll probably yeah. just be in the sealed chamber, yeah. but you have to, you know, bring the other Reggies to him or something. Maybe... The well, yeah, there's that. Or maybe that's what one of these other random little items on the map are for. Yeah, maybe. Reggie Gigas's area. Um, you think there would be any other legendaries, maybe, besides them? And also, of course, maybe the whole Primal Dialga thing. Well, some event stuff, maybe. Yeah. I fully expect to see Deoxize's event come back. Just because we haven't seen his event in such a long time. Hmm. Then again, you could say the same for Arceus's event, which we haven't seen at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he was in the Sinjo ruins or whatever, so... That doesn't count. That was one where you brought Arceus to it and oh, used right. him They're, to get... Yeah. Which right. also doesn't make sense, because you never got his event. <laughs> so it was really freaking weird, just because people would say that we wouldn't understand the whole Diamond and Pearl Arceus plot, is what the Pokemon team said, which is kind of weird. Who knows? Maybe we'll see Arceus finally come. <laughs> maybe that's in this all game. It is up in the north. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? But I do fully expect to see Deoxize an event in some way. Although maybe they'll just distribute it in something. Maybe you'll actually primal Deoxize would be funny. You get to go um, to the time and find Deoxys or Jirachi. You know, Jirachi as well. I I would expect to see Jirachi there. There's been a lot of those rumors where like. Jirachi, you find him next to the, like, the space shuttle for, and there's a wish stone for whatever reason. Yeah. Do you think? Maybe there. Um, maybe Mew, but, eh. Do you think it would make sense for Jirachi to get a Steel Fairy Mega or something? No! No! <laughs> Do not want. No! <laughs> you have seen Klefki, and that's Klefki. <laughs> This is Jirachi. Yeah, please no. Do not give the most annoying Parahaxer in the game the best defensive typing in the game. <laughs> then again, fun. Lefty became the most annoying Parahaxer, but that was because of his typing. And yeah, like, Steel Fairy is by far the best defensive but typing, period. Just That's like taking Klefki and giving it good stats. 
It's like giving Klefki a mega evolution. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just in defense and special defense. Except it's okay. giving Jirachi a mega evolution, and that's even worse because that's even more stats too. Never bring that up again. Yeah. How dare I bring okay. it up every day now. No. Uh, um, uh, another thing I'd like to see is uh, I don't want the rival to just quit after you get to Lily Code. I always thought that was retarded. That was stupid. You never even saw their final form of their starter. Yeah. Okay, bye, Pokedex. Whatever. <laughs> it was I, like, I expect a romance <laughs> because we <laughs> got one in X and Y. And Wally friend zones you if you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Wally's just like that third guy. I was like, hey, guys. Or finally we get a homosexual relationship <laughs> in the Pokemon game and Wally romances the <laughs> main character. Or maybe there's a girl version of Wally. <laughs> Well, no, 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 it's just Wally, Wally regardless to... of your gender. So if you play as a girl, it's straight, Wally and if you play as a guy, it's not. Well, maybe. Or if they wanted to make it all straight, then a girl version of Wally. Yeah. Um, another thing that we may see, um, Jodo, the legendary dogs of Jodo, we may see that. Gerbils. What may I think about? <laughs> yeah, they're gerbils. <laughs> legendary gerbils. <laughs> legendary rodents. <laughs> Sure. Uh, I don't. Well, I don't know. I don't really see that personally, but they were weren't they in Emerald? They were in Fire and Leaf Green. Some kind of thing. They were planned to be in Emerald, but I don't think they ever happened. Yeah, they were in Fire and Leaf Green, but uh, uh, they might. I am thinking they might bring it back. I'm not sure. I don't like chasing things, so. Then again, yeah. it would be them right next to Latios and Latios, which we're fairly certain are going to be back. Oh, yeah. Probably in the same way when you beat the game. Yeah, most likely. I, I want to just go it to the Southern It would be kind of funny to have Latios, Latios, and the Legendary Dog Trio. Oh, God, no. All roaming around uh, at the same time. Just put every Legendary Trio and put it in this game and have them roaming around so every wild battle you have is practically just a Legendary Trio. Oh, that would be so confusing. Oh, my God. Um, it's a bunch of dots on your map. And... <laughs> At every given time. Oh my God. <laughs> um, in terms of, let's say, well, of course, um, I think we all want Steven to be the champion and not Wallace. Exactly. Because that was dumb. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wallace had a Militic, but that's all he had going for him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, besides that, I don't know, is there anything else really to talk about in terms of story? Well, I think Wally should get kind of a like how just the rival in general should oh yeah bigger. another thing i don't think i talked about is there is of course that backstory with mega evolutions i think if wally gets a more fleshed out story maybe he'll like be helping steven finding out the secret to mega evolutions mm. and that makes sense. then he would get stronger by traveling around of him yeah and at the end he would have like Steven would have given him a Mega something, and then he uses Gallade, it for Mega whatever. Gallade, and then to battle you. And then Wally would actually have a better story than just, oh no, my parents won't let me battle, okay. <laughs> actually, yeah, I'm gonna be the... right next to Victory Road because fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I mean, I kind of hope they, he f fights, you know, we fight him again. I mean, in Emerald, yeah. you fight him in Mauville, but you still would have been nice to fight him another time, as well as the rival fighting, rival for us the end of the game. So. Uh, of course, they might go the X and Y route and just have you kind of traveling with your rival and Wally kind of together. The, the only problem with that, <laughs> I can't really imagine it myself just because there is that one like comic series that had that and it was pretty funny, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Personally, I want Beldum to be available as more than just the Pokemon Steven gives you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I plan... Maybe I... just put him in Meteor Falls somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, that's the problem with maybe New Mauville? That would work too. That yeah, because I mean, Bagon's already in Meteor Falls, so it'd be kind of weird if they're both. Yeah, there. but I would like to see that. It was kind of dumb. Like, I really liked Metagross. I still yeah, like it except like it's nerf, but still. And it was like, I think we'll probably oh, you can't get it until you beat the entire game, and only if you think to look in Steven's house. Yeah, I think we might still get a gift Beldum there, um, or if not, we'll either. Well, okay, yeah, we'll... but we'll probably also see it somewhere else i think we'll still get a gift build them yeah Maybe and it'll have good stats like the gift routes that deonpa gives you yeah i think that um it 
the one that is, well, like the one that Deontha gives you, it, it will, if, if it it'll have his thing, name too. It'll come with the Metagrossite. Oh, yeah, that would be pretty neat too. That'd just make the most sense with that, how to get that. That so. would be great. Do that, Game Freak. <laughs> um, They're going to besides... force Looker back into the game. Eh, I wouldn't mind that as long as it was handled well. <laughs> Wally is actually Looker's associate. <laughs> <laughs> Wally is Looker. <laughs> Yeah, nice Wally here. is just young looker. <laughs> because was I not sure? Wasn't it confirmed that this game was somewhere else in the timeline? Yeah, this game takes place. Uh, well, wasn't this we don't like pick... um, two years after, at the same time as Kanto? Uh, yeah. Well, technically, we don't know about Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but Ruby and Sapphire took place the same time as uh, Gen One and Fire and Leaf Green. So, and Looker came in Gen Four, and I don't know how far away that was. But if it was like how it happened was six or seven years, then maybe Wally is Looker. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It was fir first and third gen, and then two years later, uh, second and fourth gen happened at the same time. And then I think it was five years later, or was it three years later? It was some time later than it was Black and White, and then two years after, and then a year after that was Black and White two, and then and then right after that was X and Y. Whatever. Let's not muddle with it. Timelines don't matter. They're retconning mega evolutions. Yeah, I know. It really doesn't. <laughs> I was a little bit disappointed with X and Y. Um, I think their groundwork was very solid. The, you know, the game mechanics were very good overall. I like Mega Evolutions. I like the graphics and all that kind of stuff. I just felt that the main story was a bit lacking in terms of content and also the post game. So I really hope that this game kind of takes all of the stuff that I liked about X and Y and then fixes the problems that I had with it and makes it my favorite game in this the series. The thing was, for me, I really didn't give a shit about X and Y's world. It was, right. I mean, the places look pretty, but the world itself was kind of boring to me. Yeah. The design yeah, wasn't anything is pretty to much do. just... Right. Yeah, There's but with Hoenn, I really like the region of Hoenn, despite, like, all the surfing and all the stuff that makes it annoying. Hoenn it just, just kind of has some heart to me, and it's personally, unique. I would like... I'm really excited for this, because this is X and Y's engine put into a world I actually care about. <laughs> yeah, Hoenn is like the most unique region in terms of just what's in it. Like, you know, the desert, the volcano, Meteor Falls, Zootopolis, you know, Fortress City. of course, City. we have a ton of great music to work with that I'll really like. Yeah, but I mean, just in terms of environments, the environments themselves are just really varied. And like, you know, Kalos was pretty, but there weren't really that many different environments. You know, I mean, how many standard kind of grassy plainsy routes were there there were quite a bit and well like when they were different like there was actually a desert part of x and y there were the snow part but those parts they don't give me enough of that feeling and they were they were oftentimes like a one snow really gave the feeling of a large snow area in that mountain and yeah well, the problem entire is towns enveloped with it and Cohen really gives that feeling of, oh, these towns are right next to the volcano, and that's why there's this falls, and that's why there's soot in this route. And yeah. the same goes for the water places, and the places next to Mount, wherever, whatever it's called, <laughs> and the places next to the jungle. They're really thematic. Yeah, the problem great. with X and Y and Kalos is that there, like, there was a snow route, like Route 17 was a snow route, but it was like that was it. And then if you left that route, you're in Anastar, and there's no sun snow anywhere. It's like a really they, weird just cut as like, it's like every route is like its own separate thing, but that's not how it is like in real life. Yeah, so. every different kind of environment in X and Y feels really detached from the world as a whole. Whereas here, it's like in Hoenn, you can really see yeah. like the transition between areas and how things are related. So yeah, like you know it's part of the world and it's part of what makes the world endearing. Yeah. So yeah, there's our gush on that. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be a great game. Better than be a great game. Probably. I hope so. Game game be very... <laughs> this better be game of the year 2014. I mean, <laughs> Xenoblade is coming out in 2015, so this game is a chance. <laughs> Good, this it. game will be very great, so I can probably see it as like one of those best RPG titles, maybe. So that was the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire speculation discussion video. This will probably not be our last Pokemon video because we are Pokemon fans, and this probably won't be our last video on this game either, but this is our first main video. And um, coming up in the future are definitely more videos. We Me and should. Star will be doing more videos 
together. That's a combination that hasn't been seen before, so that should be interesting. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be um, doing stuff like news, <laughs> game releases of the week, but since it's going to be over the summer, it's not going to be a lot to talk about. We can talk about opinion stuff. Sure, yeah. I may be doing, like I've said before, a Xenoblade video. I might not be, but it could happen, so stay tuned for that. It depends on if I can get a suitable person to be a guest star for the video, because these two idiots don't know what the game of year 2015 is going to be. <laughs> okay, that is the end of the video. Chomp out. Bye. Have fun listening to these two assholes for two months. See everybody. Hope you enjoy Maine. Go to jail. Finally, Maine is gone, right? <laughs> <laughs>